Hi and welcome to a new In The Mail episode. This time I'm starting behind the camera and as you can see right here on the bench I have a pile of mail items that are waiting to be opened. So let's get started. In here I have a very nice item. This one is an aluminum project box and as I will show you in a minute it's made up of black anodized aluminum. The dimensions are 150 by 105 by 55 millimeter and it looks really nice. Using this kind of enclosures will guarantee a nice looking project. I got this one for an upgrade to my dummy load project. Although in my project I won't be relying on the case too much for power dissipation. Being aluminum you can use the case itself as a radiator up to a certain dissipated power. Together with the case you also get the front and back panel and the associated screws and these are uh, also from uh, aluminum. You could machine these using a CNC and get some nice looking front panels but in my case I don't have a CNC machine and I will probably end up designing a custom PCB to use as a front panel. That way I also get the nice seal screen and the required holes and cutouts. And one last thing, this enclosure has a split U-shaped form and that might be a factor to consider when choosing your enclosure. Next up, in here, I have two aluminum heat sinks which I'll be using on the same project as the previously shown enclosure. They are 90 by 90 by 15 millimeters and I'll use both of them together with some active cooling to ensure my dummy load design can dissipate enough heat. When choosing them I had to take into consideration the size of my project box as well as the internal construction and orientation of the PCB that will go inside. And although I haven't designed my PCB I have a pretty good image in my head on how it's going to look. You won't always get the best out of your usable space inside the enclosure, but you might get close if you're lucky and get the perfect size heatsink. I got these from eBay for $4.19 a piece, free shipping included. Our next envelope. In here I have a pair of 40mm metal fan grills. And I don't have to tell you a lot about these, they are pretty self-explanatory. They might get used in the dummy load project, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to see if I need them or not and that depends on the orientation of the cooling fans. If I have them blowing air inwards or outwards of the enclosure. If you're designing your own back panel, you can also design the fan grills in the panel itself. But in my case, I think I will only be designing the front panel as a PCB. Next up, we have a set of 20 pieces ZH GST connectors with cables and the associated PCB connectors. The ZH means they are 1.5 mm pitch, so smaller than your average 0.1 inch GST connector. You could use these really for anything but I got the 3 pin variant to use them in the dummy load project for connecting the cooling fans to the PCB. I'm not sure yet if the fans that I'll be using will have a third wire for RPM sense but I got the 3 pin variant anyway and I can always use just 2 pins. This set of 20 pieces was $4.29 with free shipping. If you are okay with the 0.1 inch model I think you can get those cheaper due to higher demand and availability. But for my project I wanted to get something more compact because I'm not sure how much space I'll have available on the PCB. And in our next package we have a set of 10 pieces black aluminum rotary knobs. 
They have plastic inserts and a 6mm shaft diameter size. They feel light, and don't, they don't seem to be of uh, high quality, but certainly good enough for home projects. The whole set was $2.55 on eBay, so you can't go wrong with 10 pots worth less than $3, shipping included. If you want to find higher quality knobs, you should start with the reputable distributors like Mouser and DigiKey, because I've seen some pretty nice knobs in their inventory. And in our next package, I have another two rotary knobs. This time they're metal, and you can feel they're a, a bit heavier than the aluminum ones. One is black and the other one is silver. They're about 18 mm diameter and they have a 5 mm shaft mount. I'm not sure if I'll be able to use them on a rotary pot, for example, because those usually have a 6 mm shaft, but they're nice and cheap, so I got these two without thinking too much. I got both of these for $1.50 shipped. These are some BNC female panel mount connectors. I got these five for $1.18 from eBay. I might be using one of these in a future project, but even if I don't, it's something you will eventually need, so good to have them in your lab. For this price, you won't get the quality, so don't expect to use them for higher frequencies or don't expect them to last too long. But for small hobby projects, they're just fine. Next up, in this envelope there should be a 1.3 inch OLED screen. Let me just open this and the static bag. These are very similar to the more popular 0.96 inch ones. They have the same 128 by 64 pixel resolution but the pixel size is slightly bigger and you get an overall size of 1.3 inch resulting in better viewing distance. I used to buy these from buydisplay.com but this time because I only needed one piece I got it from AliExpress because it was cheaper at $6.40 with free shipping. This display will also be used in my uh, dummy load project. And as we can see, the display pretty much has everything it needs for uh, voltage bias on the PCB, so you only need to provide the control signals. Let's see what we get in the next envelope. And this is a set of five isolation transformers. These are 1 to 1 ratio transformers designed specifically for audio applications. The isolation transformers are essential in reducing common mode noise and EMI. I plan on using this in my Bluetooth speaker circuit, although I haven't done any tests yet, so I'm not sure if they are entirely needed. I got these from eBay for $2.80 for this set of 5. They seem to be Pulse brand but I'm not sure if these are truly genuine or some uh, copy coming from the Chinese market. But it sh that shouldn't matter much for a passive component like a transformer. In here I have a tube of adhesive thermal paste. I need it to be adhesive type so that when attaching some aluminum based LED strips to a heatsink I don't need extra mounting holes or accessories. I can just use this thermal paste which solidifies and keeps the LED strips glued to the heatsink. I paid just 74 cents for one of these but I advise you to get more than one because at 5 grams you will probably run out on your first project. And I should have gotten more myself. In here I have a set of neodymium rare earth magnets and I'm struggling to separate one of these. They are 30 by 40 by 4 millimeters in size. 
This could be handy for a variety of tasks, but what I have in mind is to use them as mounting points for a small netbook that I use as a bench computer. By using magnets, I can keep the netbook in an ergonomic position, so it doesn't bother me while working at the bench, and it also gives me the option of removing it if necessary. But as I've said, you can really use these for anything. They're just some very strong magnets. Next up, I believe this one is the CH340G USB to serial adapter. As I've said before, you can never have enough of these and in particular this model has some pin headers with a jumper selector for 3.3 volts or 5 volts operation which makes it quite handy if size is not an issue. If you want something smaller you could go for the smaller module without the uh, jumper voltage selector. You can get these for $1.67 with free shipping. And to stay on the same chip manufacturer this one is the CH341A EEPROM Reader Writer for the 24 and 25 series EEPROMs. So let's open this. As we can see on the PCB, you get a deep socket with the locking mechanism for sliding in chips in deep package but you also get some SMD pads and a 0.1 inch header on the side for connecting in any way you want to your target. You also get this uh, small adapter PCB with an additional two SMD footprints to which you can solder your EEPROMs and then you can connect this one using the 0.1 inch header I believe in the deep socket. You also get a pair of 0.1 inch headers for this adapter board. I'm not sure what software you can use with this module. They don't give any indications in the product description, but I will do some research the first time I will need to use it. So this could prove handy someday and it was only $3.14 with free shipping. For our next item, we have this small what we have this small module which is a, an SWD mini programmer debugger for the STM32 series microcontrollers. Together with the module you get the required 5 pin JST cable and the micro USB cable for connecting to USB. And although a clone, the module is supposed to be compatible with IAR and KEEL but only supports the SWD protocol. So if your chip does not support SWD, this isn't going to work for you. It was $8.49 with free shipping, so cost-wise it kind of rivals with the discovery boards, where I think you're getting more value for your money. But I thought I will be using this someday as a more compact standalone debugger slash programmer, and I got one. This one looks to be a kit because I can see components, SMD components. This is a DIY LED FFT kit. The kit requires SMD assembly and it's supposed to give you 8 frequency bands displayed on an 8x8 LED matrix. It's interesting how they got a white solder mask on this side and the black on the back. I have the red LED version in here which was $7.46 free shipping but you can also get this in a variety of colors. More details about this kit will be in an upcoming assembly video. And our last item in today's episode
you can immediately guess what this is judging by the LED matrices and uh, to be more precise this is a 16 by 32 LED matrix this particular model has a dual LED arrangement so you can get both red and green for each pixel on board the PCB we have the shift register ICs as well as some serial to parallel decoders if I'm not mistaken so you'll have to provide your own code to drive this LED matrix and of course you'll have to do some SMD and through hole assembly to get it all together although I haven't searched I'm sure there is some Arduino library for driving this kind of modules so it should be quite easy to get it up and running this one also comes as a kit and requires soldering so more details on this kit in an upcoming assembly video as always Thank you for watching this in the mail episode and feel free to leave a comment or hit that like button below if you enjoyed it. Links for all the products are in the description below. See you next time.